Hi kids, today we are talking about Hinduism and Buddhism. So, first thing on your notes, it says what part of the earth is both Hinduism and Buddhism from? The answer you should have is they both are from India, which is on the other side of the globe. And you take a look, this is India right here. Most specifically, they both are from a region in India called the Ganges River Valley. Okay, so if you look at the Ganges River, it is close to Delhi, India. This is the Ganges River Valley, and you see that this is where two of the world's oldest religions came from. So today we are talking about India, Buddhism, and Hinduism. So to start, Hinduism is both pantheistic, pantheism or pantheistic, and polytheistic. Pantheistic and polytheistic. So if you look at this, you see that except for agnosticism, all of these have theism at the end. That is because theism means belief in, and they have different beginnings. Pan means everything, poly means many, mono means one, a means none. So we have no belief in, one belief in, all belief in, and many belief in. So scholars debate whether Hinduism is monotheistic, polytheistic, or pantheistic. Technically, Hinduism is somewhat polytheistic since there are thousands of gods and deities, but Hinduism is also monotheistic because there's one supreme being above all others. So when you look at in when you look at India today, how many people follow Hinduism? Hinduism has 1.1 billion people in the world today, and it is the world's third largest religion. So if you look at this chart right here, you will see that Christianity is number 1, Islam is number 2, Hinduism is number 3. Buddhism is number four, and then Judaism falls in this other religions category. So why is Hinduism called a polytheistic religion? It is called a polytheistic religion because there are literally thousands of gods in Hinduism. There are thousands of them. Here's a picture of one of them, and this is Vishnu. Okay, Vishnu is the god of death. So there's a god of life, a god of waking, a god of sleeping, a god of dreams, a god of bad dreams and good dreams, a god of thunder, a god of lightning. Some of you say, well, this is kind of like Greek theology. Yeah, it's kind of like that, except for Greek theology only had a certain number of main gods, and this one is literally seemingly endless with the amount of gods. However, they all are part of one specific God. So if you look right here, you see a list of literally 200 of the different gods that exist in India. And if you look at this picture, you will see that the picture in the middle is Brahman and all the different faces he has. So Hinduism is unique. It's unique because there is literally no one single founder. So who is the founder of Hinduism? There's no one single founder. It was founded by a group of people called the Vedas. And the Vedas were um, people that came from Central Asia into India and brought with them many different ideas which formed into a religion. So there is no one single founder in Hinduism. Just like there's no one single founder, there's no one single text in Hinduism. There are four main texts that are called the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, and the Ugamas, okay? So that kind of sounds crazy to us. The main one that you would say Hinduism follows is the Vedas.
So let's look at a couple ideas in Hinduism. The main thing you need to get out of Hinduism and what they believe is they believe in the system of karma and reincarnation. So what does that mean? Karma refers to the idea that all things have cause and effect relationships. For example, if you are cruel towards people, then eventually you will be treated in a cruel way. Likewise, if you are kind towards people, then eventually you will be treated kindly. In addition to Hinduism, karma is a concept that in many Indian religions like Jainism and one we're about to study, Buddhism. Uh, Hindus also believe in reincarnation, which is a cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. Basically meaning that if you do something good in this life, you could come back as something better. Um, this is why Hindus do not eat meat because they believe that if you kill an animal you are getting in the way of them trying to come back as something greater these animals need their time to do good things on earth so that they can be reincarnated possibly as a human possibly as something even better so this cycle of reincarnation or being reborn is not unique to Hinduism but it is unique to India. So looking at the caste system in India, this is for humans. So let's say you are reborn as a human. The caste system in India is directly linked to Hinduism. Hindus believe that people are reincarnated from a previous life and born into a certain caste or level in society. So if you had to define the caste system, you could say that it is a social system that people are born into in Hinduism. That this is a social system in which people are born into in India or in Hinduism. So in the past, the lowest castes were called untouchables untouchables. They were often forbidden from entering temples, living in the village, drinking from the wells, or even letting their shadows fall on a member of a high society because they believed that if you were reborn as an untouchable into that caste of society, it's because you did something wrong in a former life and you are being punished. So, moving away from Hinduism, we come to a... Uh, religion that is much younger than Hinduism. Hinduism is the world's oldest religion. Buddhism might be of the five religions that we study is the second youngest compared to Christianity. So, on the back of your notes, Buddhism can be described as being both pantheistic and monotheistic. So, some scholars even consider it to be atheistic, okay? So, it is a pantheistic religion or an atheistic religion. Why would it be considered a religion where there is no God? Great question. It is because Buddhism is a world view based on the life and teachings of Siddhartha Gautama. So number two, who's the founder of Buddhism? It is Siddhartha Gautama. That is an answer on your quiz tomorrow that is over your notes. So if you are one of these people that skip through and don't listen to the lectures, you will not know that there's a quiz tomorrow. But if you listen, you know there's a quiz tomorrow. So... The Buddha, or Siddhartha, was a, uh, born into a Hindu royal family in the 500 BCs, so that's 2,500 years ago. At the age of 29, he left his palace in a chariot to meet his subjects. He witnessed an old man, a diseased man, a decaying corpse, and he was depressed. And he found that why do people get sick, get old, suffer, and die? He had never seen suffering before. So he said, I need to figure out why people suffer. 
What's the point of life if all we do is suffer? He went and, as the story goes, sat underneath a tree and meditated on this topic for six weeks and did not eat. And eventually, he came to the main philosophy of Buddhism, which is the Four Noble Truths. So for number four, it's the Four Noble Truths. That existence is suffering. Suffering comes from a desire for fame, pleasure, wealth, or possessions, and that the purpose of life was to end suffering and to end desire, and the only way to end desire is to follow the eightfold path of doing just about everything right in your life. So the common belief between um, Hindus and Buddhists is that much like Hindus, Buddhists believe in reincarnation, that people are trapped in a cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. So the goal for every Buddhist is to attain nirvana. If you can attain, attain nirvana, a state where you desire nothing, reaching that state, you can break the cycle of reincarnation and of earthly life suffering. The final calling for Buddhists is to help bring others to a state of nirvana or enlightenment. Nirvana is awesome, a really awesome band, by the way. So, uh, India, Buddhism. Buddhist sacred texts are called the sutras. That's number seven. Lastly, Buddhism ranks fourth in its popularity um, in the world. It does not exist today in India very much because 95% of the people there are Hindu. But if you look at these pictures, you see that it spread to Afghanistan, Tibet, Sri Lanka. And now today, Buddhism is flourishing as far away as China and Japan. According to this map, Buddhism is the predominant religion in many regions of Mongolia, China, and Southeast Asia. So here is Buddhism over here. You see in the red, that is Hinduism. That's our lecture on Hinduism and Buddhism. Be ready for your quiz tomorrow. You can use your notes on it.